Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me today as we travel to Washington, D.C. This was a very fun experience for me and my brother Corey was there too, where we got to go to the Smithsonian, got to see the Renwick Gallery, which had an exhibition celebrating their 50th anniversary, or 50th anniversary. And the JR, the John James Renwick Alliance celebrated their 40th anniversary. It was a lot of fun to be in Washington, D.C. at this time and experience the the mingling of the community and the artists that i've never really seen before in one place so it was a lot of fun so thank you for joining me on this journey it's kind of like a little review of the weekend because some of you couldn't be there some of you were there some people are welcome to join me and add their points there's no real formality to this um this talk i'll just be sharing the photos i took and some of the pictures of the pieces and some of the associations, which are really great for some of the artists we have in our Habitat family. So um, this is my title screen and know where I'm at. So I'll kick on through that. So just so you know, we've had so many visitors come and see the 50th International Exhibition, which is on display. People who have been flying in. They, we've had so many amazing reviews. If you haven't seen it yet in person, you definitely have to come and visit. The show is still up and it's one of the most impressive ever. So. We're here in Royal Oak, Michigan, come and see the event. It was an amazing opening for um, the April, end of April, where we opened up the present, opened up the event. But you can now can have, a, instead of having crowded people like this, you can have your own personal tour. So give me a call and come on in and see us. It was great seeing many of the people that came in for our opening, but it's now all about the artwork. So come and, and, and explore. The public has been coming in, in uh, uh, intensely, which is great because now they can see and tell their friends. The virtual versions online on our website, habitat.com. There also is a button on the front of our page now that lets you know what we're doing for these talks every week. So if for some reason you miss an email, you can just go to the front page of our website and it says, here's our weekly talk and you can click the button RSVP right there. So if you wanna tell anybody about these, you can just send them directly to our website, which is really easy. So uh, in, as in early May, we went to Washington DC for the uh, this present moment, crafting a better world, I actually stayed with Tim Tate in his uh, home uh, for the weekend, and I and Corey was also in town. He did. I stayed at a hotel, I believe, and we kind of were around town together. Had a, an amazing opportunity. I haven't been to the Capitol since I was a kid, so it's a really fun time to go and check it out. This is me slowly uh, getting on a, a taxi cab, appearing at Tim Tate's studio. It was good seeing them because the Washington Glass School was right there, so they had a luncheon. It's great seeing people I haven't seen in years, Mario Arsini, Howard Cohen, you know, a, a lot of people were at this actual talk and met some people and had a great time. Yeah, it was Howard, it was a lot of fun and got to see some of the, uh, the space of the Washington Glass School because I had never been there before. And it's a great facility that they really promote the arts and the community to start working with glass and, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah, there's Rick Heath and, uh, and there's Jerry was there too, Paulson, so it was fun to see some family and friends. So the events went on and the, the very first uh, event we went to was on Thursday night, which was the basically the donors night and the VIPs and some of the Congress people had a chance to come to the first night. And I think it was 210 people. I know this because I asked the staff there because if you've ever been to the Renwick Gallery, it's not that big. Um, it has an amazing collection of rooms, a giant stairwell I'll show you up the center but they only fit so many people at once, but they surpassed, I think the second night we'll get to had about 600 people. Um, it was, this is my photo as I was leaving. Uh, it was, it was this is like maybe even the second night, but it was kind of an amazing building to see. It's very historic and this kind of looked really interesting. So they had, the, they had, the, had my top hat on, they had all, everything going, the red carpet out. They had this really amazing light that kind of spanned the title of the show, this present moment on a red carpet, which was kind of fun to see. And then, you know, the VIP started coming in. They had bars everywhere. They had a really fun, like, machine that took your picture and then other activities. But a lot of the artists were there, which was a, which was a lot of fun to come see and explore. And then I, I bumped into, I had a, the hat on, as you can see, and I bumped into Howard Bentre's wife, uh, Wendy McGaw. She was there because she uh, helped donate a piece. We helped donate a piece um, of Vivian Wang's work. Some of the Jerry Paulson donated a piece, Hale Meyer Weiss donated a piece. So there was a bunch of uh, people that were there that were invited to come because of their participation in the weekend. And their names are published in that book, which I held up a second ago, which is in my lap. 
which they gave you on the way out. So if you have a chance to get the, get the book and, and really see the experience, but all the pictures I'm showing you <coughs> today will be from the book. And then this is kind of me meandering around with my camera. And there's some, Nick Cave was a really well-known contemporary artist mixed in with the Howard Ventre, mixed in with Dale Chihuly. So this is the kind of association, which is really great because we're getting the names of the people we know into the art world. Now the, the Renwick and the museum approaches things as craft entirely because they're, they're sharing this, the history of craft and we're pushing into the fine arts at Habitat. We're trying to you know, let people know the work is really has meaning, but you know, there's, there's a, a trail behind it. They have a, the history to talk about. What an amazing facility. Um, there's a that big piece in the back was a, a big, huge neon sign. And there was actually a Chihuly. You can barely see it tipping down uh, above that neon sign. They actually raised it up five or six feet so they could have that big piece in the background, not have them overlap, which they were grateful for because usually they have to put stuff away. And then the, the dinner was very nice. We got to meet a bunch of people. Corey and I sat at the same table, but we weren't sitting next to each other. We got to meet um, some people we've never met, supporters. Uh, there was a, an artist, I think I have a photo of him coming up who was at our table. Many of you know him and will come back to me uh, when we get there, but it was, it was an amazing time. Food was served and it was nice to, to mingle with the people who I've never met before at the Renwick event. And um, the whole building, I guess, was renovated maybe a decade ago or something or less. Someone could probably correct me on that, but it was really, really well done and really contemporary and feeling. Oh yeah, there we go. So these, some of the people we sat with at our table and the guy in the back left, his name is Tom. Oh my God, what's his name? He makes small little glass pieces. He used to sell them in the 80s and 70s. Somebody help me and unmute, to, mute yourself. Come on. Guy in the second from the left, I know his name. It's gonna, I'll come back to it. His wife's name is Marilyn. Patty, Tom Patty. There it is, Tom Patty right there. In the, in the, he sat at our table. And the supporters of the museum was great talking to them and meeting their staff and learning how they work because, you know, like, like a gallery, they have the responsibilities of creating events and making a happening, but they, their job is, you know, fundraising, getting feet through the door. So the, uh, kudos to them for continuing the efforts. And then some local celebrities, you know, Deborah Cesaro was there, and Deborah Tresco was there, and Tim was there, and a bunch of other artists. I bumped into Miles Van Rensselaer, Brent Key Young, I think, was there the second night. It was a lot of, a lot of friendly faces in, in, in the air. And it was a lot of new people, a lot of artists I had a chance to meet too that worked in different mediums that were working in clay and a bunch of other things we'll talk about too. Oh, we also went to the Hillwood Estate Gallery Museum and got a chance to see this incredible uh, por porcelain piece that we had a chance to, J the JRA had a talk by the artist, his name escapes me at the moment, but maybe you may know it. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun to come see this huge installation. And we uh, loved it. <laughs> you guys are unmuted. You're welcome to mute yourself or say hi. Uh, and then we had lunch there and got to see some of the other of their of the uh, luxury of clay presentation they had there. So it was nice to get some exposure for other arts just in the area. And it was they were invited to be part of the JRA and it was fantastic. And they were celebrating their um, 40th anniversary at that particular time. So all kinds of anniversaries going around. Habitat's 50th, Renwick's 50th, JRA's 40th. So everybody's getting old. I love it. Uh, so this is some of my uh, photography I took at the actual uh, opening. And we'll look at some of these pieces, maybe some of them. On the far right is uh, Christina Cordova. Many of you know her work, piece was donated. The artist in the middle, I, I don't know. Um, I had a little conversation with someone who knew her at the show. And then obviously the Karen Lamont on the left, I posted that picture on uh, Facebook saying I was looking for something to wear. It is a beautiful piece. I have a better photo of it up, coming, up, up and coming. So on Friday night was more of a public event. I think it was a, a you had to pay to be there. They had food around the room. And this is the same room that had all the tables in it the next day. And they had some tables and music and DJs. It was a lot of fun to see how such a you know, prestigious institution then ties in with the public and what they're into doing to get them through the door. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of people there that I, I had a chance to meet and mingle with. And then during the weekend, I got to go to the Smithsonian, which is something I've been to since I was a kid. The JRA had a talk with uh, Janet Copples, Che Rhodes, and Annie Wilson about the forge and the future of craft. And this was at the um, at the Hillwood, same place where the ceramic piece was. 
And that was a lot of fun to experience their talk and share their thoughts of the future. And um, I think Janet on the far left was really amusing. Uh, she kept talking about, you know, cause she was a, a art writer about writing, the, writing about the arts. And they would ask her questions that didn't really apply to an art writer. And she'd be like, nope, got no answer for that one. But they may have recorded it, but it was a great experience uh, to hear the three of them have a dialogue about the future of craft. And here, here's a kind of a photo of them discussing that up there uh, on the panel. And it was, it was really well received. It was great to meet them all. So just mingling photos, me running around the Smithsonian, see some people we know, artists we recognize, like Danny Perkins and, um, and, uh, and, and I think it's Ben Franklin in the center there. And on the left, Fred Wilson, just run, walking around the museum, seeing people and artists that uh, were incredible to see. And a picture of me at Bob Hope and then some contemporary stuff. And it's funny because this Sydney Hutter piece I saw upstairs in the Renwick and they have this big panel across all these cabinets with this huge picture of it. And I called uh, Sydney to congratulate him. I'm like, oh, this is great. I've never seen this piece. It's like, yeah, they did that 30 years ago. <laughs> Like, sorry, my congratulations a little late, but it was nice to see them supporting your artwork so much. It was really funny. All right, we're right on the floor. So this brings us to the, the actual like work in the show, which is which is kind of fun. Here's a list of the names that they promoted in the writing of the website. It's kind of copied and pasted there. Uh, Nick Cave, David Chat. We had Dave Chat in the in the gallery in the past. It's great to see him again too. Um, a lot of people I know, a lot of people I don't. That's the point of this is, is to mix, mix all the mediums together. I took this great photo as they were doing the photo of a lot of the artists that attended. Some of the artists that attended didn't make the photo. Um, they only ran around and grabbed people. I do understand how complicated it is to grab everybody for a photo, but I can see the Del Torre brothers in there that I recognize and some of the other artists I had a chance to meet quickly at the show. Everybody was so busy. So first, I'll just kind of breeze through some of the other artworks that are that were at the show that you know are either well known or at least you know different different associations that I don't really know much about, and I'm eager to learn more about these artists, especially from the fact that they were in the show and accepted and curated in by the people that were in the know for the Renwick. And there's people like Robert Lugo who takes current, uh, you know, it looks like Biggie on one side, and on the other side maybe Tupac, different contemporary artists. I guess they're not that contemporary now, but they were in my childhood. I love both of them. Nick Cave, I've got to see that piece on the left live and in person. Looks like a human being is just hanging out inside that. And I, I, from what I've heard is Nick does do live um, action art experiences too, where people actually walk around in these things. I don't know how they see, but it's pretty incredible. Furniture mixed in. Uh, founding Fathers writing this work is called. It's interesting to see. There is um, huge uh, pieces on the wall, cloth. There's a big, huge white American flag about a, the, about, I'll show you, maybe I have a photo of it, maybe I don't, about the, a path of uh, the American history that could have been different, whether slavery happened or not. This is the same piece I was showing you earlier. Obviously has some difficulty looking at, not aesthetically pleasing, but must have an incredible meaning to be so powerful, like two-faced or something, maybe someone hiding behind themselves. I did this piece particularly wasn't out at the show. And that was kind of interesting to see what they actually had out. The piece that um, we donated was a Vivian Wang work, but it didn't make it out in the show during the, during the week we were there, but that's what happens. They only have so much room. More, this looks like a maybe a wall panel piece. And there's a Christina Cordova work, which I saw on the floor and took that photo of. She dabbles in glass as well. Norma Minkowitz, goodbye, my friend. And a lot of these photos are kind of taken out of the book. They're on the website too, but just giving an idea. This was kind of like a big piece they were talking about in the book, big promoting for this for the weekend was lots of images of this piece. I think it's like, it looks like it's um, for my memory, it's cloth hanging on a wall. So that brings us to, you know, some of the artists we know. So. This was another one, April Surgeon. This was donated by Jerry Paulson and his wife. Her name escapes me, but it'll come back to me before we end this conversation. And this piece is also not pictured in the book, but it's mentioned in the back. So I, I was happy I took a photo of it when I was there because I wouldn't have a photo of it. I think this photo is, is a great photo and I love this piece. And it's a recent piece, so they must have you know, just got it for this 
donation. It's it's great to see here in the show. Someone I don't know, Pencil Brothers from Egypt, um, or it's called Egypt, incorporates glass, maybe stained glass, but fun to see. Something something, something different. The Del Torre Brothers were there. This piece was huge. It was probably the size of me if you took me and stuck me on a wall and span me in a circle. And <clears throat> they're incredible artists. Obviously, they're visionaries. They are heavily supported by um, a Ch Cheech Marin has a gallery in California. And they do what they love to do. And it's great that they get the recognition in the, in the Renwick show. Kit Paulson, who's someone we've worked with in the past, we did a show a couple of years ago um, that was a wearable show. I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head. Glassotic. And she sent us these masks that she'd put on your face that were very interesting and very fun because it was a wearable show. So it's, it's wild to see her work in the Renwick, it, but it's been donated or purchased, but it was great to see it. Some of the pieces you kind of missed to the first walk around. So the second or third walk around, you had a chance to actually catch and see the pieces that you didn't see. And some of them are put together in, in big vitrines and toppers. Some of them were sitting by themselves. This one you couldn't miss, it was downstairs. And it actually was on a mannequin um, incorporating glass. And it was, it was definitely one that you stopped and looked at because <laughs> it was definitely huge. Uh, metabolizing the border, metabolizing the border. Something different, something that could have been on the Glassotic show, it was wearable. Uh, Howard Bentre's piece was downstairs. There was like a, a room that you really had to know was there. It was off the gift shop area. And then that's where Chihuly was as well. So Wendy actually, his wife, his uh, late artist's wife told me where the piece was and I had a good chance to go down and see it. And the Chihuly's, I think maybe Brent Key Young's piece was down in there too. Thurman Statham piece, great artist, big friend of our gallery. And I did not see this out during the show, um, but I love the coloring of this work. And it's great that he was incorporated as an African-American black artist in this exhibition. So focused on diversity. Che Rhodes, this work was uh, donated uh, by Marilee and Marilee Orsini and, and Frederick Heath. And he was there, had a great chance to, to talk to him and see him. He was lit up like the sun, I tell you. It's nice that he was able to be there all dressed up and receiving the recognition for his his work in this exhibition. And it was a lot of fun to see him. The Dale Chihuly floats, these were downstairs by the Ben Tray. I think they were just on a plinth. A lot of the work was obviously covered in vitrines and toppers, keeping them safe. Uh, David Schatz's work. So if you're familiar with him or not, we've had him in the gallery. He had a ghetto blaster and I think we had a sewing machine. And what you're looking at, which you can't see here is he takes glass beads and beads around everyday objects and everything is encased in beads. And he actually invented multiple processes for doing this because you know trying to get a bead wrapped so tightly around an object has got to be insanely difficult. And this particular one is called Love Dad. And I don't remember the object of what's inside there, maybe like a safe or something, but this was up on display too by the Nick Caves. Um, this was a large installation that I showed you before and this was below the Dale Chihuly and it flickered. And this thing's probably, I don't know, 15 feet tall. And it was really powerful. And it was kind of like a, a floating point where people kind of were drawn to, because this piece was straight up the stairs as you walked into the Renwick. And you can see it now. I don't have her name mentioned because it's kind of cut off, but it says this present moment used to be the imaginable future and it would flicker and it would turn into this moment used to be the future. It was kind of a fun uh, work to see live and in person. And it was just so impressive. They didn't even buy a light in the room because the, the pink of the neon really did the job. Here, I wonder who that guy is hanging out in front of it. Too cute. <laughs> so this was interesting too. This book, this piece, this Judith Schechter piece was on display. So the piece is the same piece. On the right was how it was displayed in the museum. On the left is how it's displayed in the book. So I don't know which one's right, if they had to hang it on the wall, I would suspect the one on the right that was actually on the dark wall inside the museum, because I took the photo on the right. But it is a beautiful work by Judith. Uh, and, and it's a very moving piece to see. And they had it really well lit on the wall, LED lit behind it. Very interesting. Something interesting. Somebody, somebody could tell me which way is right. 
And then, ah, this beautiful Karen Lamont piece. Karen was there during the weekend, had a chance to see it. And they did a really great job of putting this black wall mounted behind it to really make the piece pop. And I, I must give myself some pretty good credit for this photo because I posted it on social media too. And, uh, and the Karen thanked me for posting it because it was such a great photo. And we have the donors here, Hal and Myra Weiss, who uh, provided this piece to the institution after so much effort of trying to get this show off the ground. Thank you both for doing this. You guys were obviously an integral part of making this happen. So thanks again. What a beautiful piece. See it live there. Uh, Mecca Evans uh, from the Pipe World. Talk about a different style. You know, we just had the AACG talk, which I finished recently by Robert Mickelson, which I highly recommend you watch because he approaches the pipe world from a layman's term, from a layman's way or terms. And I really needed that because it was a really great experience for him. And this artist comes from that world. And it's probably one of the, the best. And this work was on display too, this um, sewing machine called Raffine. And a uh, 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 gorgeous work. Somebody I don't know, Joe Fetterson, Horses and Deer, made it into the show or into the book. I don't know if I saw it in the show, but it's very possible I did. Someone I don't know, someone to learn more about. Uh, Deborah Moore, uh, this tall installation work, I did not see it out at the show. I've only seen this photo of it that we took out of the book, but great to see Deborah recommend, uh, represented in this exhibition. She's been doing this for a long time and definitely deserves it. Uh, Stephen Powell, we had uh, help with this donation. We knew they were looking for a Powell piece and connected uh, the Renwick to the late artist's wife and uh, Shelly, and she was able to make this happen. And I didn't see it out at the show, but I'm, I'm hoping someday they'll mix the work up and put it out. Preston Singletary had an amazing uh, display there. This work is called Self Journey. And I'll, I'll show you later in the talk, we actually went to the American Museum of a Native American Indian. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's written right later on. And he had an entire installation um, there that I'll talk about and show you, which was incredible. That was at Tacoma. I guess he has six pieces total donated to the Renwick. So it's a great representation of him and his work. Another piece, I did not see this one out, but it was in the book and it's a great example of Preston's work, Thunderbird and Hawk. Another artist I don't know, Marvin Oliver. Um, great to see some people that are that are acquired or um, donated or somehow made it to the Renwick, maybe their own collection. So I have a little research to do, but it's nice to see some new faces and new names that have reached a level without me getting on my radar. Joyce Scott, you guys did the talk with her recently at the ACG, was a fantastic talk. And I know some people, are, I think Tim Tate's doing a collaboration with her in the future. Very impressive artist, and it's great to see her work on display in the show. Here is a Vivian Wang that now lives on in the Renwood collection that came from us. And um, I know Vivian is insanely excited to see her work at the Smithsonian. You know, she started working with Glass not too long ago. So that is one heck of an achievement getting in the Smithsonian um, this early in her career. So, so late in her careers. <laughs> oh, so this is Greta Key Young's work. Um, I believe the piece on the left was out in the show, but I didn't have a chance to see it or I was by the Ben train, I missed it. But he told me there was two pieces owned by, that he made that were in the collection. So it was great to have, to see him there. I'm a big fan of Brent's. He does some amazing things. So there's some artworks that were in the book that, or names that were in the book or on the website that were not featured. I'm hoping, I saw that. Oh, Flora, Flora and Joey. <laughs> Flora and Joey, yeah. Having to had an apple, I believe, or a pear in, in the exhibition. So you can probably see it on their website, Tony Jalola, who is a Native American artist, um, and then Richard Ritter. I think he might have a small paperweight of some sort. And then I went on the website and I couldn't find the rest of Richard Ritter's work there. So as things get updated, maybe these things will be on there, but it's great to see more people we know in the community uh, in the collection. So on Saturday night, uh, we took a drive um, and I was in the car with uh, Tim Tate and I think uh, Donovan, who is his husband, who drove us. And we got to the facility, which was the Native American Museum, or here it is, the National Museum of the American Indian. And this is an incredible, this was in Tacoma, if you had a chance to see it beforehand, but now it's here at this museum. And it's basically, I, I supposedly a well-known story in Native American lore about a raven releasing the sun, the stars, and the moon. And I didn't really go into too many photos 
of the talk of this space. So I highly recommend you go see it and read about the story. But it was a, an amazing experience because the walls were decorated, the, the sounds were all controlled, and it was like four or five or six rooms that you'd walk through telling this story about this raven. Um, oh, there's me and Preston. We're hanging out together. I'm in the foreground. He's in the background <laughs> hanging out at the table. And the museum was an incredible multi-story building in Washington, D.C. It's definitely a, a, a very uh, impressive building and uh, telling a very important message. So it was a very small event. Not many people invited, you know, for this event at the, uh, and this, is, this was a JRA doing this event. And it was a very intimate and fun time to see and meet some of the artists that were there and then see Preston, because this was all about him and his, his presentation. And so they had some great food. I'll give, give them that for sure. And it was great to see people. Luckily, I was sitting close enough. They had assigned seats. So that's always, I think they had assigned seats. I don't remember. It was always fun to see this kind of thing. And Tim Tate did some trivia, which was kind of fun to get people into the into the moment before we had a chance to go up and see the show. So um, briefly, and I won't go into it too much, is this this crow in the story sneaks his way into a home to release the sun, the stars, and the moon. And the, this narrative is told through Preston Singletary's artwork. And I don't know where he made it between like 2017, 2018. And it's a lot of work. It was an impressive exhibition. This, this is like one of the first things you see after you walk past two white crows, this giant boat, this lake of water and fish around. And then there was other works that are just part of his career or telling part of the narrative of the story on display. So there's so much more that you could see it by going and checking it out in um, Washington, DC. The story goes that the crow um, becomes a spirit and, and impregnates the daughter and there's the body of the daughter impregnated before he infiltrates the family to release the stars the sun and the moon from the but it was just incredible and there's preston was telling talking about his work on the upper left there and this room was just full of people and characters from the story he was really it's a really uh great experience and then they gave he gave a talk and you know preston did he did a, a um a song from his heritage, beating a drum. This was kind of afterwards. And they were thanking the artist for being there at the event at the JRA and um, being part of the weekend celebrating the 40 years of the JRA. So that is the talk today. I am I would love for people to, to, uh, to tell me if they had a chance to see any of this, if they had a chance to go and explore and look at all this incredible uh, weekend that we had out there. It was a lot of fun and like, even if you don't have a chance to be part of the opening weekends, going to check out these exhibitions is definitely an important thing to do. There's so much to do in Washington, D.C. I was telling people before the talk that we actually went to the Spy Museum, too, because to, to, it was just something fun to do in town. I dragged Corey there, and Corey loved it, but it was an amazing time, and I'm so grateful for everybody for coming and enjoying it, um, enjoying this with me today. And uh, those who are, who are here, Merrily, I know you were there. Carrie, see you. How you doing? But it was a lot of fun to do, and uh, and uh, I'm hoping to do stuff like this in the future. And maybe people can meet me there and be part of these talks because I think it's a lot of fun to 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 go off and share this kind of experience because not everybody can do it or have the time to do it. So, anyway, thank you all for joining me today. It was a lot of fun seeing everybody. And like I said, please go and see these stuff. And I hope to see everybody next week. We're going to be doing uh, the NGG presentation by Cheryl Decat. The, the Corcott, I think her name pronounces. It should be uh, an enlightening experience of an artist who's heavily motivated by the, the history, the Black history in the world and about the narrative it, it encompasses. So please join me then this upcoming um, weekend. But thanks for joining me. Thank you, Marilee. I see you guys, Rick. Good to see you both. Thanks for being here, Andrew and Arlene, Cheryl, and thanks uh, Helen Meyer for being here too, and Steve. All right, and there's, bye, Alan. Talk to you guys all soon. Be well. Have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Thanks, Aaron. It was great. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thanks, Aaron. That was really interesting. Yeah, you're more, great more than presentation. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Bye bye.